So, what exactly is Casper? Casper is an open source, proof of work, decentralized cryptocurrency which functions on a modified version of the heavy hash algorithm and effectively implements a block DAG network dubbed the Ghost DAG protocol as opposed to a conventional blockchain. Casper implements extremely fast block times, boasts impressive scalability and future proofing, all whilst maintaining a high degree of security and simplicity. I always encourage people to actually go and have a look at the research behind this instead of blindly investing in a project. In this case, I'll refer you to a bunch of the theoretical research which is available on the Discord server. Please make your own decisions and don't just take my word for it. Now on to setting up your mining software. Alright, to begin we're going to create a folder for which we can store all the mining software. I'm going to call this mining1 and I'm going to create a subfolder for the KDX node which we will use later on. I'm now going to make this folder an exclusion from the Windows firewall as Windows Firewall will often label this as a threat just due to the nature of mining software. So we're going to go to our virus and protection settings and from here let's go to manage settings and then we're going to add this to our exclusions list. Say yes to the required administrator privileges and then add a folder exclusion. Navigate to your mining folder and select it. And then from here we are done here. Alright, next up we're going to install the KDX node. There is a command line node, however I found KDX to be the most convenient for all intents and purposes. So we're going to go to the website and we're going to simply download the Windows version. However, I've just pre-downloaded this as my internet is quite garbage here. Anyway, we're going to open this up. Once again, administrate privileges, say yes. And just run through the basic installation steps. It'll install this in your program files just for your information. And then we're going to go ahead and install it. Right from here, we're going to go ahead and open it. Upon opening KDX, you'll be greeted by three settings. The first one we're going to deal with is the data dictionary folder. Uh, we're going to set its location to our mining folder for the sake of convenience over here. The starter dictionary folder is going to contain all the pruning point proofs, blocks and headers that the node requires in order for to accept and deliver solutions back to the Casper network so that you can earn your mining awards. So now once that's selected, we're just going to select the configuration as a Casper node since we are going to be mining to it. And from here, we can just proceed. Alright, now we're going to head over to the settings folder and we're just going to tweak a final few settings. As you can see, we've set the data addiction folder to our mining folder. We're going to label the mandatory dark theme, and that's about all we need to run the address here. Just a side note, if you're ever having problems with KDX syncing, just navigate to the setting and delete the data addiction, and that should solve most problems. From here, we're just going to navigate back to the Casper menu and have a look at the storage and DAG synchronization. First thing we're going to look at is the storage tab. This shows how much storage your data folder has used. This can be viewed in the KDX node file, and here you can see it. That will get larger over time. A couple of other unrelated things. Then in order to be able to mine to your node, you require the DAG synchronization to be at 100%, otherwise your node will not be able to accept blocks or submit your GPU solutions. Next up, we're going to be creating a wallet in order to store our newly mined Casper. There are actually four wallets, but I will show two here. First one is the KDX wallet. You can choose to create one or recover it from seed if you already have. Pretty straightforward. Make a password and make sure you take down the recovery seed. Do not forget it. Write it down in real life. Next up is the online wallet. It is essentially the same as the KDX wallet, except it is on the net. Uh, as you can see, we're just going to search it up and it will have essentially the same process as the KDX wallet. Just remember to take down your recovery seed, I can't stress that enough. Next up we have the miner, um, there are actually four community miners, however I like to use BZ Miner as I've just found it the most convenient and uh, they all essentially function the same. So we're just going to go ahead and search it up and go to the first link, make sure the URL is the same. Um, I'm going to be downloading the Windows one, obviously you have Linux or uh, another operating system, choose that. Uh, for the sake of speed, I've already downloaded this and we're just going to open it up and we will extract it now to our folder on the desktop. Uh, you do not need to create a folder for it, it will create one for itself automatically. As you can see, we'll be putting it here. 
So we're going to go and select the pathway to it. Uh, your pathway could be different, however, this is just the pathway that I've so happened to choose. Just use some common sense there, and we're going to go ahead and extract it. I'm just going to go ahead and rename this to make everything nice and neat. Now, don't be alarmed by all the junk in here. We only really care about three things, and that would be the miner itself up here. It's config file, which dictates how the miner operates. Then we have the index file here, which gives us information about our miners through an online GUI. Alright, now that we have the mining software installed, we can go ahead and start configuring it. Over here, we have the primary configuration for our miner. We have our secondary configuration. We then have our algorithm, which our primary configuration will utilize. The wallet address, which we will mine to. And then our connection settings. Let's begin by changing the algorithm. We will do this for both the primary and backup, since the backup must be configured properly if it is to be a backup. We are then going to go and find our wallet address. Um, you can either find this on the online wallet or the KDX wallet or the other two if you have decided to use them. Uh, it will be a long string of numbers with a Casper and a double colon in front, similar to this over here. I'm just going to use mine over here since I have not created a wallet on this computer. Next we're going to be connecting our miner to our node. You can also connect it to a mining pool if you so choose. However, if you have a decent mining rig, I would recommend hosting a node uh, for a number of reasons, but mostly due to increased control. I will leave these down in the description. You can simply go copy and paste, and we will just make the backup the mining pool in the event that our KDX node is not working. Following this, we're going to now go and find this computer's IPv4 address. Since this node is running this computer, we will need to connect to this computer's IPv4 address. Now we're just going to simply go to the start menu over here, CMD, and we're going to open it up, and then we're going to type ipconfig. Uh, I won't be able to show any information here, as naturally I don't want this stuff in the public, but all you need to find is the IPv4 address. Copy and paste that into this location over here. I'm just going to put a bunch of ones for now. No need to do this with the mining pool. And that is it. If you have done anything properly up until this point, you should be able to simply open up BZ Miner and go through a couple of prompts. Um, this isn't my mining computer, so this will not work for me. However, if everything is working good on your side, uh, BZ Miner should indicate that your GPUs are mining and should display a hash rate. So now that you have everything set up and you have a steady trickle of Casper coming into your account, it's only natural that you would want to go and trade this Casper. Casper uh, is currently listed on two exchanges, uh, TXBit and Xpatron. There's also a person-to-person -person trading channel on the Discord server, however there's been quite an influx of scammers recently, so only do that if you are experienced with that kind of trading. First we'll look at TXBit, they have a great user interface and nice fees, and they offer trading of Casper in USDT, uh, the BEP20 network. Next up we have Xpatron, uh, very good fees as well as user interface, and they offer trading of Casper in USDT, uh, the TRC20 network, Bitcoin and Litecoin. Last couple of bonus little things I would recommend. Uh, first is MSI Afterburner. I know this may seem like a no-brainer for anyone who's done mining in the past, but new people, uh, uh, MSI Afterburner is a no-brainer. It will greatly increase your efficiency of your GPUs and thus save your electricity. Next up we have Task Scheduler, um, I have made a video about this in the past so I'm not going to delve into too much detail, but essentially what this allows you to do is to start programs such as your miner and node upon your computer startup, and if you pair this with AC Power Restore upon startup in your uh, motherboard BIOS settings, you can fully automate your system to start without any manual input. The final piece of software which I would recommend is TeamViewer. Uh, this allows you to remotely connect to your mining rig from a different computer. Um, in my case, I study in a different town from which my mining rig is located, and thus I need to be able to connect to my rig without any person on the other side. 
Uh, with a couple of tweaking of the settings, Team Viewer is able to accomplish this very nicely. And finally, last but not least, I would highly recommend joining the Casper Discord server. Uh, it is a really nice community with a wealth of information, including a very useful bot which can be used to check the overall hash rate of the network, mining rewards, uh, halving, and a bunch of other information. There's also support channels for any sort of technical difficulties and very friendly devs who are consistently engaging with the community as well as votes for when uh, an important decision needs to be made. So once again, would highly recommend it. And just like that, I think that wraps up this video. I hope you enjoyed and happy mining.